our next guest, Hector Garcia, wants to keep growing toward the sky. While attending college and working in a hospital, Hector met a patient that changed his life. The man owned a window washing business, and Hector was so impressed, he bought the company. Ziomaro Galinda has his high rise to success. We specialize in commercial high rise window washing. We pressure wash buildings, the concrete prefabs. We restore metal. All the metal that you see in downtown LA is like 20, 30 years old and has to be restored. Uh, we found a niche doing that. Uh, past seven years, we've also added pigeon control. You were working as an orderly and studying oceanography at the same time. How did you end up in the window washing business? Completely by accident. Um, I was working as an orderly, as you said, and an elderly gentleman came in and he sprained his wrist. Uh, once I checked them into the emergency room, I asked him, how did he sprain his wrist? And he told me he fell off a four-foot ladder. He proceeded to tell me his story, that he has been washing windows for 40 years, 25 years in New York, 15 years in Los Angeles. And he was a one-man one show. He mentioned that he grossed $1,900 a month, and he only worked 20 hours a week. And I thought to myself, here I am working 40 hours a week, uh, back in 1979, I was making $5.50 an hour, and uh, the numbers were attractive. You were only 22 years old when you bought the business. How were you able to afford it? What happened, uh, the, the gentleman that I bought the company from, he required a second trust deed on a piece of property. At that time, I didn't have a property. Uh, my father did. So my father had enough faith in me that he put up a second on the house, uh, just in case I defaulted on the payments. How were you able to expand your one-man operation to a staff of 60? I attribute the success of the, the business to marketing and professionalism. Uh, back in 1982, 83, I would put on a tie and shirt and slacks and go knocking on doors of the high-rises, of the managers of the high-rises. And the most common response I got was they couldn't believe I was a window cleaner. I had a tie on. They were used to seeing gentlemen or guys in jeans and t-shirts, scruffy looking, and not professional. And the, when I handed them my card, and the first, one of the questions they another asked, question they asked me was, do you do the work or who does the work? And I responded, I do the work. For the first two years, every six months, the business doubled. Um, after that, it started tapering down to 30%, 25%. Now, it's, it averages between 18 to 25% a year now. You almost fell into this business. Do you have any regrets about the choices that you made? No. Uh, I could say no right now, but five years ago, seven years ago, I was having a problem with it. I saw myself as a window cleaner. And my aspirations were, again, were not, were not focused to anything particular, but it certainly wasn't a window cleaner. And over time, as the business grew, and obviously we saw the rewards and the company growth and the profits and everything else, I started to realize this is more of a career. Once I accepted that the fact that I would, this is a career, I was able to throw 2,000% of my effort into the business. Hector, what is the toughest part about being a business owner? The toughest part is the time away from the family. Uh, being responsible for the business, I'm always double checking the work, I'm always monitoring the radios. Make, we have day crews, evening crews, midnight crews. Uh, whenever I'm working on a big proposal, unfortunately I dream about it. And I wake up in the middle of the night thinking, okay, you know, a different angle or something I could put into the proposal that makes it that much better. Hector, tell me how you landed the Toyota account and what service you provide to them. We were very fortunate. We were servicing a big facility down the street from where Toyota is located in Gardena. And in performing the services, apparently they have a community meeting where all the facility managers get together and they share ideas, share contractors. And I was just at the right place at the right time and the gentleman referred me to Toyota uh, they gave me a chance, I bid the work, and I was fortunate enough to get the work. Share with us, if you can, the most important piece of business advice that you would give a small business owner. Have a set goal, write down the steps to that goal, 
be organized and follow up with everything you do. What do you enjoy most about what you do? I guess the freedom to call the shots. If we have a client, a potential client, and they want something done, we can go in and present a package that's very unique to the industry. We are able, and it might be a foot in the door. So we might make some money on it, we might not make some money on it, but it's my call. I'm able to do that. Wow, he's the boss. Did he say that part of his business includes pigeon control? I think that's what he told Ziamara. Wow. Thought of, thought of everything, didn't he? <laughs> I sure Co covered did. Covered every base. <laughs> Hector has seen the highs and lows of window washing in more ways than one. When he first started his business in 1980, Hector juggled a hospital job, full-time college, and window washing. In the first year, his business only earned a couple of thousands of dollars, but during the last year, his sales totaled 2.6 million. You 